may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Welcome back to the channel, share, subscribe, like this video, make sure you put your prayer request in the bottom. There's tons of news, and I mean tons. So much going on right now, and I'm trying to figure out where to start is always the fun part. We've said this for about a week, everybody to keep their eyes open, especially this weekend, on into next week, even into Father's Day. We've been getting a lot of confirmations for these these times we need to pay attention to what God is telling us about the news itself. We tell you the rapture is very close. It could be this week. We don't know. We know it's close. Lisa called me early, early this morning. We all feel the same thing. We all know something's up. Gigi at Blue Heaven was the same way. She was messaging me last night. Feeling the same way. We all, we're all feeling it. We know something's up. I will tell you this. Emergency action messages was all night and they've been all day. And I've seen some of the weirdest patterns being flown over the United States in the last 24 hours that I've never seen as much as I've been watching flight radar and watching monkey for the past, well, since 2020, to be honest with you. I've never seen them do what they're doing right now. They're on alert. They truly, truly are. And we're, like I said, this is a new territory for us all. It really is. Now, Russia announces from the U.S. of the U.N. the ultimatum to NATO. So this is going to fall around the 14th. That when it looks like Russia is going to meet with the U.N. in New York. And they're going to stress an ultimatum. Now, the French are talking about the development of nuclear missiles in Libya, Cuba, and Venezuela aimed at Florida. So there's a lot going on. French and U.S. concern over movements of the K-571 Kazan submarine. So this is what's in the, everybody's minds today. Russia convenes the U.S. Secret, Security Council on June 14th to deliver an ultimatum. Now, that is the weekend of Father's Day. It's very important. This is another day we've been confirmed through Shelley and other people that they got around that time to, for us to be really watching so this week, I don't care what you have, dreams, visions, whatever comes to you, make sure you put the Shelly on the program and get it to us. Anything you're seeing about this week, if you're seeing dates, times, whatever it is, even if it's a small, make sure we get it. We're all working together here. And I do believe a lot of you guys are going to get what we get this week. So we're all seeing this. So we need to make sure all week long, our ears are open, our eyes open, because right now is a very, very important time. A while ago, the president of Russia, Putin, repeated that Moscow's reserves the right to give weapons to enemy countries of the West. Russia reserves the right to supply long-range weapons to some countries in the response to armed supplies of Ukraine, Vladimir Putin told a plenary session on the St. Petersburg International Economic Forum. Moscow reserves the right to supply long-range weapons not only to certain countries, but also to uh, structure organizations under pressure from the countries of the Western Coalition led by the United States. So far, Russia has done, not done this, but the appreciated decision can be made at any time. We are not delivering yet, but we reserve the right to do that, said Russian leader. Uh, great concern has been caused by the U.S. and France Putin's statement about exploring we nuclear weapons which concede, uh, concedes with the development of the M-class nuclear submarine and other warships to Cuba. We are not exporting nuclear weapons yet, but we have the right to do so, Putin says. Listen to that. 
for those who said, well, they're not sending nuclear weapons, just regular weapons. Well, I'm telling you, God's going to knock you off that fence, thinking it's just plenty of time down the road. That's what he's trying to do. People just ain't hearing it. The head of the Russian state recalled that the first time First to the speak about the use of new weapons of mass destruction was not Moscow, but London. The president, uh, the Russian president did not rule out making changes to the country's nuclear doctrine, stressing that the use of nuclear weapons by Russia is possible only in its exceptional cases. At this same time, Vladimir Putin warned that the U.S. allies, that Washington would not come to Europe's rescue in the event of an exchange of nuclear strikes between Russian Federation and European nuclear powers. The leading French media are extremely dealing with the dispatch of Russian warships and especially the M-class nuclear-powered submarine to Cuba. The French report says we can relieve the Cuba uh, Caribbean crisis and mention possible sites for the placement of Russia's retaliatory weapons, SS nukes. The leading French media zone military talks about the possible deployment of the M-class ballistic systems with nuclear warheads in countries other than Belarus. According to the same source, Libya, or at least in part the country controlled by the forces of the Marshall uh, Hafter retaliatory weapons could be deployed. Deputy Minister of Defense of the Russian Federation, uh, I'm not going to say his name, has met half star four times since August 2023. So this is Libya. That's a very dangerous place to have any kind of weapons like that because they'd use them. We remind you that Moscow intends it to install naval bases in Tobruk or uh, Benghazi. We all know about Benghazi. As for the United States, they must have, uh, they may have to relive, relive the Cuban Missile Crisis in the 1962, said the French, the French say implementing the development of nuclear weapons on the island. In Latin America, Russia could rely on Venezuela. They are an active military cooperation between the countries and evidenced by the de uh, deployment of two Su-160 strategic bombers to Carcassa in 2019. Additionally, additionally, I will learn to talk, the Perguna Peninsula could host missiles with sufficient range to threaten Florida. It remains to be seen that these Russian ships will be what they'll be doing in the coming weeks, if not two months. The U.S. Navy expects they participate in the naval and air exercises in the region. Don't be fooled. I think what they're going to do, I talked to Lisa about this last night, is they're going to bring, I, somehow they figured out how to mask their nuclear weapons that we can't detect them. And I think they're going to come here, and I think they're going to literally start dropping these off in some of our worst enemies in Africa, South America, and that's what they're going to do. I think that that's why we saw what we saw. We couldn't figure out how did they get this stuff past our U.S. Navy. We just couldn't figure it out with everything God had shown us over the years. And that was the biggest problem I had. Where's the U.S. Navy? How did they get this stuff to it? They're going to do it by calling it exercises. And it's in international water. So they smuggle this stuff in and it'll be ready when they use it. That's how this is going to happen. Now we know how it starts. It remains to be seen what these Russian ships will do in the coming weeks and not months. The U.S. Navy experts uh, expects to participate in naval and air exercises in the region, both in Cuba and Venezuela. Exercises that could uh, undoubtedly include the deployment of Su-160 Blackjack strategic bombers. Those are the ones that lay havoc to the East Coast when all this goes down. So I do believe they're going to leave those strategic bombers here. I do believe. I think this this is what God warned us about so many years. It's just bizarre. It's took this much time, and now here we are, and I'm seeing the beginnings of it. And it's now I can tell you, now I can see how they got the stuff here. Shots outside Alaska. The French recalled the event of 2020 at the time the Russian Fortella was participating in ocean shield exercises off the coast of Alaska. The exercise uh, culminated in the launch of two missiles, the P-8, the P-700 from the nuclear power submarine K-186 and the P-1000 Vulcan from cruiser uh, Varyag. The P-700 can also be armed with nuclear warheads. The presence of the Yemen M-class nuclear submarine K-571 Kazan could make it difficult for Americans for at least two reasons. As NATO officials regularly point out, Russian submarines have often been unpredictable behavior 
and they're in particularly they're particularly effective. Now, I will tell you this: when this thing does start and it does happen on that fateful day or night, it will be mostly subs and these strategic bombers that does all the damage. That and the ones that they send that comes over into Canada into the United States. There won't be that many of them, believe it or not. They don't fire many from their from their home port in Russia when they come across. It's mostly done close up with the submarines and that. And like I said, it will be, it's not a full out exchange. It's a limited exchange between the two giants when it happens. Might be 30 to 40 tops of both. But somehow, somewhere, it has to be God that limits that strike or there wouldn't be nothing left. And people's like, well, you can't have a war if there's a nuclear. Um, listen, nuclear war is different when a bomb comes down. This is where people watch too many movies. When a nuclear bomb comes down and it detonates and if it don't hit the ground, within 14 days, you can go back outside. Okay. This difference is with a nuclear, like a nuclear power plant, if it's ruptured, then you're talking thousands of years. But a nuclear bomb, all that energy it takes to make the bomb explode and give you that nuclear blast, it most of the radiation blows up in that, and it goes away after a while. Different with a nuclear silo, or, or not a silo, but a power plant. It all stays around, and then you've got, a well, Chernobyl. So, there's that. This is, I thought, was very interesting. And pay attention to this one, because I didn't see this one coming. Anti-scaling riot fence is going up around the White House. So, be, like I said, just everybody be paying attention. If they're putting that fencing up again, they're going to say something. They're going to make some kind of announcement. So, all my our family members in the cities and stuff like that, pay attention to this, because they're getting ready to do something stupid. Video below from last night shows work crews installing the anti-scaling riot fencing around the White House. So they're getting ready to do something. It tells many folks that they're either going to do something or announce something that ex they expect will cause riots. What may be they planning? Ukraine, Russia, a military draft, nuke first strikes. You don't know what type of thing unless they already know it's going to be a cause of massive upheaval. So that's happening. We're, we've got film on it. So they're definitely starting to put it up. Now get this one here. We're going in. Just keep on bringing it. United Nations to put Israel on a blacklist of countries harming children in conflict zones. The United Nations have decided to add Israel to its blacklist of countries and organizations harming children. Now, they're talking about children. The Israel's harming children. When they took Israel's children and raped them and burned them. Now, you can't make this up. It just shows you the United Nations is beyond Luciferian evil, and it truly is. And they've got a seat there for the that Antichrist, 666, in the UN. You want to know how evil these people are. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres told Israel's defense attachment in the U.S. General Hattie Silberman, Israel media reported on Thursday, despite Israel's weeks-long efforts to disgrade Guterres from taking this step, Israel is expected to be included in the list of published next week as part of the report of the UN Security Council, at, according to local channel 13. Last month, Ynet News reported that the Israel officials were increasingly concerned about the move and was imminent with saying the security uh, general hates Israel and is no longer possible to influence him. So like I said, he hates Israel. The meeting of Israel's inclusion in the blacklist is very problematic and may cause countries in the world to impose arms embargoes on Israel. Israel will be surrounded. It's all happening, people. Israel will join a UN blacklist of countries including Afghanistan, Congo, Iraq, Somalia, Sudan, Yemen, and Syria, as well as the terrorist organizations like Al-Qaeda, ISIS, and they're putting Israel in this. Last year, Russia was added uh, to the list for its attacks on Ukraine schools and hospitals. The list includes the affordable countries that organizations under the heat are heading parties that would have taken sufficient steps to improve protection of children. Palestinian Authority, which, you know, kills and rapes kids, has long demanded Israel's inclusion on the blacklist. I, you can't make this stuff up, but let me tell you something. Jesus is coming to wipe these people out, and I, 
too bad. That's the one thing I can't watch him do when he ha- when it happens, because that's going to be fun to watch. In 2023, Guterres praised Israel's engagement with the UN Special Envoy for Children Armed Conflict, Virginia Gamba, and identification and practical measures, including those proposed by the UN to protect children. According to the Palestinians, last year Israel committed grave violations against the Palestinian children, including killing 54 of them. Israel has criticized these. Uh, I hate to know how, how many Americans killed in wars. You you can't hardly protect people, especially when no other country would even let these people in. So, you know, it's just amazing. And these people filmed raping and burning kids. These Palestinians did. And the, don't get me started. YNAS started that people, the first draft did not mention the use of hospitals or children of human shields like Hamas does, you know. So there's that. But the, the big thing carrying from that is that literally Israel is surrounded by these evil people and that the UN is doing going to do stop at nothing to get Israel surrounded and embargo them and put them where they can't make money or make a living. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to sandwich them out. Like I said, Jacob's trouble is definitely there. It's also inside of Israel's government itself. All these people are working together, even inside Israel's government, to cause this mess. Germany updates wartime measures, draft laws reactivated. Germany has updated its wartime measures for the first time. Now, uh, Canadian Prepper did a good show on this last night. He actually has the manual, and he went over it. Preparing for potential conflict with Russia, the new plan includes compulsory conscription, reinstating the draft. And all these countries are going back to the draft. Evacuations of citizens and food rationing, plans for mass evacuations and ensuring one hot meal per day through rationing. Makeshift bunkers. and pre- Now, see, there was somebody the other night said, well, no, they're not doing that in Europe and everything. There's another one. And now the another pamphlet's out. So somebody lied on there literally lied. Subway stations to be used as bunkers, hospitals ready for a sudden influx of patients, emergency food reserves stored secretly, uh, stockpiles of food in undisclosed locations and for crisis situations. This, you can't make this up. Job bans in key sectors, prohibition, prohibitish, um, gosh, prohibitish on quitting jobs, critical on defense, media must publish official updates, NATO troop movements, uh, the rapid movement of NATO troops through uh, Germany and the Eastern Front, civilian roles for healthcare professionals, doctors, uh, psychologists, nurses, and vets, uh, per, repurposed for military and civil use, priority repairs for military equipment, quick repair and maintenance, military equipment, increased defense budget commitments to NATO. These measures follow threats of retaliation from Putin should Germany allow Ukraine to strike Russian territories. So if they're releasing that, that means they're going to give them that one missile, the Taurus missile, to strike way into Moscow. That's why they're doing that. So more people starting up the drafts. We're seeing all these governments starting up their drafts again. So if you don't believe that we're in the last days, I don't know what to tell you because it's happening and it's happening under your feet. Along with, like I said, the economy of America is crashing by the minute. I don't look for it to last long because BRICS right now is basing their whole economies on gold. They're all switching. That's why you saw all these countries point out all their gold out of America reserves and taking it so they can use that as their currency reserves. See, right now the dollar, everybody's using the dollar as their currency. The more people pull out this gold and go to bricks, they drop the dollar. And that's why the, the United States is faltering. These other countries know that. Now, once China goes into Taiwan, that will be the what breaks the camel's back. Because they are so tied to the U.S. economy. And their big plan was to get off the U.S. dollar, to not be, you know, controlled by it anymore. So they're, they're buying up gold reserves like crazy. So they can drop the dollar because I've had people say, well, China's not going to do that. They're too tied to our economy. Not anymore. They're not. You better keep up. People's like, you need to do your uh, research. I've done my research. You haven't done yours. 
They've been buying up gold reserves all year long. And I mean massive amounts. They've already pulled theirs out of America. It's gone. So they're all going to this new BRICS system, which will be based on the, these countries' own gold systems. So America knows that. America knows it's falling now, big time. That's why they're planning this war with BRICS, basically. This is about money, people. It's about money and power, what it's always based on. That's why I said they will have their war because this is about money and their power. This ain't about you. They don't care if you're in the aftermath of it. But this is about the elite's power. This is they're, they're testing each other's power limits. They're going to go to war. That's why God said they've already made up their mind. They're going to fight because this is about money and power. That's all it is. And these over here in the West are losing their power to these guys who are starting up their own bank systems. They ain't going to have that. That's why they're trying to pick fights with them. They want a nuclear war with them, and they will get it. And God's warning us that we're going to be let, we're leaving, and he's going to let these, these people fight it out and destroy themselves. And then the, the Antichrist will come in, clean up these guys' messes, and wipe them out wants to survive and he will he wipes them out too and then well it all leads to armageddon people all this leads to armageddon and the millennial reigns what all this revolves around to why everybody thinks that you know i hate hearing these people they're like well in another 25 years you don't have 25 years if you read the bible you know you don't have 25 years but these people they believe they they're infinite they don't never die and they're always it's going to be man in control Boy, they're about to get the rudest awakening in the next little while. Could be any day now. They're about to get the rudest awakening of their life when Jesus shouts down like an archangel and pulls his bride out of here and all these bold judgments start upon the world. One after another, billions dead, billions dead, billions dead. I mean, literally, being wiped out like that. That's what's going to happen, and that's what is happening right now. That's why he's warning us to get up. We're coming. He's coming to get us. We will go. And then, like I said, just think about those four angels that get released from the Euphrates. Lord, they kill off a, what one third of the planet. That's over like over. Oh, I can't even tell you how many that is. But you know they wipe that many out like that. You don't mess with these aren't these aren't these angels for sure. So I mean, and that's just one judgment. There's there's so many I can't even. I mean, there's like tons of them. One after another, they will never let up. Water turning to blood, all this, it just, it goes on and on and on. So once we leave, all hell on earth will be everywhere. It's going to really teach these people having their pride month. They're going to wish they could go back and get down on their knees. I'm telling you, and tell Jesus to save them. That's what's coming. I promise you, pride comes before the fall. And this year, it will be literally the truth. Pride will come before the fall. Because I think any time now, now that Pride Month started, the fall will be uh, will start to happen. We'll start to say that's why God's warned us and warned us and warned us. That's why we're getting so many confirmations about what is about to take place upon the earth. So, like I said, be ready. Be watching. Listen to everything. I don't care how simple it is or what you think. It may not be something. Make sure if it stands out to you, put it in the comments and put it out to Shelly. If you're lost out there, if you want to get saved, put it in the parentheses with Shelly's name if, if you need somebody to walk you through it. But literally, we're at the last moments down here. It is. We can keep telling you and keep telling you. But I promise you, one day, any day now, this is going to happen. And we will be pulled and then all hell on earth will break loose. They've already set it up. I'm telling you, we've seen this years in advance. And now we're finally seeing it take place. What they're going to do. They've already made up their mind. They will have their World War III. They don't care about you. You're just in the way. And you're going to figure that out. But Jesus is telling you right now, hey, you can come with me and I'll have to go through it. The choice is yours. Trust the gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Jesus died on the cross for our sins, past, present, and future. He died and was buried and rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. All right, people. Let's say our prayer. And then, like I said, 
I'll be back on later tonight. I got to cut my grass tonight. I probably, when the rapture happens, I'll probably be on that lawnmower. I'm starting to think that. I really do. Because my grass is growing so fast. I don't know if your all's is, but it is like, I, I'm tired of cutting it already. Lord Jesus, thank you for another day. Thank you for waking us up to see what's happening, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for watching over the watchmen and watchwomen around the world that are for spreading the gospel, Lord, that you're coming to get on that ark before it's too late. In Jesus' name, protect them and their families with a shield. In Jesus' name, it will be done. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for always being with us and waking us up through everything to see what is going on in Jesus' name. Pray for the Jews, Lord, through these dark times of coming to be with them, Lord. In Jesus' name, it will be done. Lord Jesus, watch over all of us, guide us and protect us and help us at all times. Pray for the innocent, the hungry, the sick, to get them, Lord, to the rapture itself so we can all leave and not have to worry about these things ever again. In Jesus' name, it will be done. Pray for the ones who come against the channel, for you to lighten their hearts before it's too late. In Jesus' name. Pray for the ones who bring their loved ones' names and friends here each and every day that they will be saved before it's too late. In Jesus' name, it will be done. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for being with us waking us up to what is happening without you we would have no clue what's going on out there because they are lying to us at every every point and every corner we thank you lord for all the information you're using for all of us here with all the confirmations that we are leaving and we're leaving soon in jesus name i pray and amen all right people everybody have a nice day i will be back on here tonight everybody keep their eyes open and ears open if they're putting up that ride fencing Oh, Lord only knows what they're about to announce, so we got to pay attention. I love each and every one of you. If I don't see or hear from you again, I'll see you in heaven. Thank you once again for tuning in to Global Rapture Watchers, where we do daily updates here on YouTube, letting you know that we're one day closer to our Lord and Savior coming back. Thank you for all the support for this channel. This channel was created for God's sheep, those that are waiting for their Lord and Savior to come back and get us in these last days. We do updates once to two times a day here on YouTube. Thank you for all your support for the channel. God bless each and every one of you.